Hey everybody, Matt here. We're gonna do an easy yoga video today. I had a really hard workout yesterday and I'm pretty fucking sore. So we're gonna take it pretty easy today. We want to always kind of be alignment focused with the yoga, not um, pushing for any sort of external goal, but really paying attention to the alignment, and allowing the fascia or the connective tissue of the body to be gentle bring the skeletal and muscle structure into alignment as always we want to focus on the primal cues and that is gonna the primal cues are what allow the deep muscles to align the skeletal system so that includes right remember arch low back tuck tailbone squeeze in below the belly button and then squeeze in from the gluteus medius and lift from the pelvic floor bring your collarbones back Hug your sternum in and lengthen through the back of the neck. So I don't have a yoga mat, but if you do, you can start at the back of the mat. Inhale, float your hands up, come overhead, and exhale, fold forward. Kind of bend your knees here to allow the low back some room. Fingertips on the ground. Inhale, drag your fingertips back as you look forward. Exhale, push your fingertips away as you fold. Inhale, come forward. Let's come to hands and knees and do a few cat cow. And we still want to have uh, the primal cues engaged, the pelvic floor engaged, the sternum wide. And notice the elbows, we want them to bend straight back like so. Shoulders down the back. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Inhale. Every time in yoga, we extend the spine, right? Every time we open the chest. Uh, inhale, and every time you contract the spine and close the chest, exhale. Let's do a few side to side. So we inhale, spine at neutral. I'll, t I'll move so you can see it. Inhale, spine at neutral. Exhale to the side. Inhale, spine neutral. Exhale to the side and the tendency here is for that shoulder that you're bending away from wants to come up to the ear Keep both shoulders down your back. So we're focusing on the obliques and the side ribs Good all right come down to child's pose so knees wide toes together hey, on your elbows and we're just going to do a few movements. So here we're going to drag your elbows back. Keep your shoulders down the back. As you inhale and then exhale, come up. Inhale, drag your elbows back. Exhale, come up. So we want to feel this through the back, through the shoulder blades. Dragging your elbows back. And if you really focus on dragging your elbows back, you'll really feel this through your armpits and your shoulder blades. Okay, I'll switch so you can see. Drag, drag, and then let's come to the side. So, child's pose, hands to one side, hands to the right side, and we're just gonna do the same thing diagonally. Inhale as you come back, it's extension of the spine. Exhale as you gently come up. Drag your elbows back the whole time. So you're resisting with your elbows as you come back, and then you're sort of pulling yourself forward with the elbows as you come forward. Switch sides. Drag your elbows back. Drag them back and keep dragging back as you come forward. Drag back. Come up. Keep dragging. Drag back. Come up. Drag back. Come up. Drag back. Come up. Good. Now the fun thing you could practice is uh, working with the elbows and knees and a lot, a lot. So the elbows and knees are kind of the weakest link sometimes. So if you're up in plank on a full plank, your elbows, unless you're paying attention, are going to wobble and those knees are going to be a weak point. So we can, so just working with this as a plank is a fantastic practice because it locks out or, or it holds in place those joints that tend to wobble. So let's come here, elbows and knees. Make sure you have a blanket under your knees if this is painful. Inhale, open. And we want to be pushing that grounded elbow away. 
and then exhale, come down, keep pushing that elbow out away from the, the belly button. Inhale, exhale, and we're twisting, so we inhale on the twist. You could twist with the breath kind of either way. You could exhale on the twist, inhale as you come forward. That's a little easier. If you want to bring the breath into the lungs as you twist, that's going to be more restrictive, but also stretch out the intercostal muscles, the lats, all kinds of stuff. And let's switch sides. Oh, nice. All right, let's, that's a little bit of the mid and upper body. Let's do the low body. Let's just do some hamstring openers with a low lunge, right leg forward, left leg back, hands inside. Inhale, come forward. That's the extension of the spine. Exhale back. Drag that front heel back as you pull forward and keep dragging the front heel back and back knee forward, right? As you come back, the, the front heel and the back heel knee are pulling together the whole time. Shoulder blades stay down the back. Keep going. I'm going to move camera so you can kind of see what we are working for with the elbows. We don't want the elbows to point out like this. We want the elbows to be, if you bend them, they point back. This is going to open up the shoulder girdle oh, and release kind of the, the upper shoulders. And then you can... Do a few things. You can turn the, the toes out and continue. Or turn the toes in. Good. Other side. Left knee forward. I'll switch so you can see. Left knee forward, right knee back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Again, that front heel is dragging back. That back knee is dragging forward. That way we're kind of seesawing the psoas along the hip. Making sure the primal cues stay engaged here. Here's kind of the difference between the primal cues not engaged. And then with the primal cues engaged, you can see the difference in the back. Then you can turn your toes out, in, continue for a few more, but that front heel, you want to keep it dragging back. And I'll try it with the toes in. All right, good. A little bit of an active warm up. Let's rest a little bit because, again, this is sort of a rest day for me. Um, let's do a reclining twist. Lay your back knees up. Bring your left knee into your chest. Come over. Here's the trick with this is a lot of the times you'll want to put that right hand down. Try to leave the right palm up. And then that left hand can come all the way out. It's important to keep the primal cues engaged here. So arch the low back, tuck the tailbone, pull in the glute meat, pull in under the belly button, lift the pelvic floor, widen the collarbones, and that's going to help you bring the stretch in to the fascia. Otherwise, if you're not engaged, you're just going to be reinforcing the muscle patterns that are already there. So let's just hold here for a few breaths. Good, and then we can switch, and I'll show you from here, from this angle, so you can see. Leap knees to the left, or hug in the right knee. Knees come over to the left. Now again, use the back of the left hand. That right hand can come out, engage the primal cues, engage the hips, the shoulders, lengthen the back of the neck, and just 
Breathe deep. Again, as you breathe in, you want to push your diaphragm down towards your pelvic floor. And as you breathe out, push your diaphragm up towards your throat. All right, nice. Okay, now we'll do a Z sit. So a Z sit, um, I'll bring the camera a little bit forward since I'm not standing up so you can kind of see better. A Z sit, so sit like so, and then just let both legs fall. Um, in this case, my legs are pointed to the left and then come up to fingertips. And, and notice here, it's just easy to sag. Engage those primal cues and notice how you can kind of your spine is going to come up, your weight's going to rock onto that left glute. And then inhale, lift, exhale, twist a little bit. See, see right now our belly button's kind of pointing along with that knee. We kind of want to bring it out to side towards the top to, to the top of that leg. Inhale, lift, exhale, twist. Inhale, lift, exhale, twist. Inhale, lift, and then exhale as we twist, kind of fold forward to elbows. Maybe it just depends where you're going to come down. That right elbow might be kind of along the shin or it might be along the quad. And again here, uh, engage those primal cues, engage the pelvic floor, the shoulders, and the back of the neck. Drag your elbows back. And you can do a, you can play around here. You can do like a static hold, or you can kind of like move around. It's going to be different every day. And you kind of feel when you're moving that connective tissue, the fascia that's kind of gripping, it starts to feel really nice if you just move a little bit. And you can sort of feel it release again. We want to think of the myofascial release or the release of the connective tissue, the softening of it as gently because it's there to protect you. So if you were to catch a baseball that someone threw at you, your connective tissue would wham, it would it would strengthen to allow your you to catch that without damaging your arm. So that's like a, a strong motion is going to reinforce what's already there. So we want to really soften and kind of let the body's system say oh this is okay we can just sort of go with this so again you can kind of like float the shoulder blades on the back you can kind of go side to side or just stay static focus on dragging the elbows back and dragging your heart forward it all feels pretty nice and then let's switch sides and again if any of this feels good just pause the video and hang out there um Ooh, I am freaking sore from my workout yesterday. So, ah, I need this. Man, my glutes are killing me. So, again, we start with the knees up. Legs fall to the right this time, up to fingertips. Notice the difference again. Uh, primal cues not engaged. Primal cues engaged. It takes a bit of attention and a bit of work in the beginning to get these muscles responsive. But over time, it's so worth it because it takes the strain off your low back and neck. And then again, fingertips, inhale, lift, exhale, twist, inhale, lift, exhale, twist, inhale, lift, and then exhale, let's come on down. Again, that left elbow might be on the shin or it might be on the quad. Um, and then inhale, lengthen here. And then exhale again, twist your belly button down towards the ground. And you can hold static, just dragging those elbows back. Or you could like kind of float the shoulder blades along the back. See that? Like you're bringing them together and then lifting the chest. 
This is good practice for push-ups or chaturanga because when we're doing push-ups and stuff, we want that shoulder blade motion to originate the action. We want the, the motion to start there. And so just getting those shoulder blades, they can kind of get frozen along the back of the rib cage. So this is an excellent one. We could go a little bit side to side. Work out the side body. Okay. Twist a little bit. There's not much twisting you can do, but again, if you start to bring your belly button out towards the right here, you'll definitely feel that twist in the, in the low back and the side body. Or you could just stay static. Lengthening the spine, re practicing and reinforcing the primal cues. Good. Nice little twist. Let's do a back bend. I'll wrap this up here in a few minutes because this is just sort of a recovery. If you're feeling sore or you haven't done a lot of yoga and you're just I don't know, try to get a feel for it, kind of get down some body awareness. That's a really hard thing for a lot of people is um, just just being like, okay, where, like, if I think about moving my right hand, can I actually do it? Sometimes not. So we'll come into just a gentle bridge here. So feet about hip width apart. In case you're wondering, hip width is you put your hands together in between the balls of your toes. That's about hip width. And then you've got a variety of arm positions you can use in bridge. I kind of like this one because this just, oh, it's such an amazing opener for the, the uh, pecs and the delts. And by anchoring on the ground in sort of a cactus position, you can find out where there's any tension in the inner arm or the, the, the upper back. Okay, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Again, notice that it, here's, here's me doing it without the primal cues. And then here's if I'm engaging the primal cues, right? Completely different. There's no sagging or pinching of the vertebrae on the low back. And mosquitoes. I'm ready for summer to be over just because the mosquitoes have been uh, draining me. Uh, whew. Inhale as we come up, right? Because it's important to always inhale as you extend the spine. And then exhale as you flex the spine. All right. Nice. Now here's a nice resting pose. This allows the sacrum to open. The sacrum is the bone in the back of the hips. Uh, super important for craniosacral work. That's the parasympathetic system. So what we can do to, add, to give the sacroiliac joint some more room is to point your toes in like that. You see that? Point your toes in, let your knees fall in. That's going to allow the sacrum to open on the back or the sacroiliac joint to get some room. Then we can rest here. You can have your hands on your stomach or just out, up, Kind of whatever you want to do. This is just our rest pose and the last pose because this is just a quickie restorative. And again, see, see, notice the difference here without the primal cues and then with, right? Big difference. Maybe you can't see it, but I can certainly feel the difference. Again, the primal cues, they do take some practice and it does take some effort, but in the end, it's sort of like, I don't know, putting your shoe, learning to put on and tie your shoes in the beginning takes practice, but it's a, it's a hell of a lot better than stepping on rocks and glass and dog shit all day long, walking around barefoot. All right. All right, everybody. That's it. If you want to close out with a nice little meditation, here's the thing. A lot of people I find for myself sitting on the ground like this extremely challenging for meditation because tight hip flexors in guys especially like you see how my knees are up if your knees are up that's tight hip flexor and i certainly despite years of yoga i can't get my knees to rest on the ground right here so i'm not going to do a seated meditation but what's really nice 
What's really nice, especially if you're a kind of a rookie, is a wall meditation. So we want to start with the heels against the wall, but uh, hips against the wall, shoulders against the wall, and then the back of your head against the wall, and then spin your palms out, and bring the backs of your palms against the wall. You may need to kind of widen the stance here a little bit, and then engage the primal cue. So tuck your tailbone, hug in the glute medius, hug in from the, the front belly button, lift from the pelvic floor, widen the collarbones and the sternum. Hold. Just become aware of the touch of breath as it flows over your nose. Nice work, everybody. Woo, a little wobbly coming off of that wall. So that's pretty good. Again, the cues to remember. Um, the primal cues. Arch low back, tuck tailbone, hug in from under the belly button, hug in from the sides of the hips, the gluteus mediumus, and then lift the pelvic floor. By establishing a strong pelvic floor, everything else, this is like having a strong foundation for your house even more so than the legs. Um, Cause this is where all the really strong muscles kind of originate. So even more so than like we're thinking about strong legs, obviously foot stability is important, but the hips, right? If the hips are off, the spine's gonna be off, the shoulders are gonna be off, the neck and the jaw, and then the whole, all the glands in your head are gonna be off. So we don't want that. So arch tuck, Pull in, pull in from the sides, lift, widen your collarbones, hug in the sternum, lengthen through the back of the neck, soften the jaws and eyes. So those are the primal cues and those are the kinds of things that you can just practice all the time. And you really should, anytime it pops into your mind, say, okay, run through those and just see how long you can hold it until you kind of forget because you will but anyway thanks for watching everybody and i'll catch you next time all right bye